overarching thing for sepsis and for nurses to remember that if they think sepsis, the patient probably is, and they need to say it. They need to say it out loud to their healthcare team. They need to say it out loud to the attending in rounds. I think this is more than an infection. I think this patient is sepsis. Hi, I'm Maureen Seckel. I'm a critical care clinical nurse specialist, um, and I work at Christiana Care in Newark, Delaware. I have been a critical care CNS for many, many years in a medical ICU. And I've also been the sepsis coordinator for the healthcare system since 2013. But I've been involved with sepsis and the surviving sepsis campaign since 2004. As the research evolves and we get more and more studies over the years, you will see better guidelines. If you compare and contrast the guideline that came out in 2004 to what it is in 2021, it's an entirely different beast based on the evidence. It's a good thing. Progress is what it is. So we will continue to see it evolve. Early sepsis screening. Screening is part of it. What the guidelines are pretty clear about is not, not to do for screening. You really shouldn't be using QSOFA as a screening tool. The QSOFA was really always meant as a tool to identify people that are sicker with sepsis, the patients that we really should be focusing on. We know that we should be doing serial lactate, and that's really something that nursing keeps an eye on. But along with serial lactate, we should be looking at capillary refill. We've had capillary refill since the 1940s, before my time in nursing. Um, but it's an oldie and a goodie, but it does help you measure and monitor um, resuscitation. Fluids, there's so much emphasis on fluids, and the guidelines are clearer and clearer every time. We should be giving crystalloid fluids. We should be giving balanced fluids. And what's a balanced fluid? A balanced fluid is not sodium. So normal saline is not a balanced fluid. For the most part, we should be giving balanced fluid, which are Ringer's lactate or plasma light. There are clearer guidance on what we're doing for IV corticosteroids. steroids. Uh, for years, nurses were clearly proning patients for ARDS or difficult ventilation and we were giving them neuromuscular blocking agents and we were going full court press. We kind of now know that we don't need to do that if we don't need to. We shouldn't, um, either no neuromuscular blocking agents or maybe a dose of um, IV intermittent bolus. There's clearer guidance on IV vasopressors. Norepinephrine is the drug of choice. Don't have to think about it. Should you be giving epi? Should you be giving phenylephrine? You should be giving norepinephrine as the first agent for sepsis. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> So the guideline did come out and clear issues with vitamin C to not use vitamin C. Not a weak recommendation about vitamin C one way or the other, but don't use it. Long-term outcomes and goals of care, we've never had a section. The guideline, it's the very first time that this section is in the guidelines. And it's really what nursing care is all about. Not only did you get them through the ICU, but what happens to them afterwards? What happens down the road, two weeks, three weeks, three months, six months? And what are the best things to do? My best advice for nurses about sepsis is to say it. Just keep saying it. Say sepsis. You think you're smart. You've been at the bedside 24 by 7, multiple years, whether you've been there a year to 40 years. You know your patients are sick. You know something is wrong. It's not just a little sepsis. Sepsis is sepsis and you should start treatment. We get disarmed sometimes. You hear from the residents or maybe you get report. They're just on a little oxygen or they're just a little confused. There is no such thing as a little organ dysfunction. It's organ dysfunction, dysfunction, they have an infection, they have sepsis, just say it. Say it loudly, say I think this patient has sepsis and I have experience.